Uh, so thank you so much, Channel 11, for having us. Um, I'm Michelle Clare with Family Violence Project. I'm the Community Awareness and Prevention Educator. And I'm Mike Pike. I'm the Domestic Violence Investigator with the Somerset County District Attorney's Office. And we're here today to talk about um, Domestic Violence Awareness Month. October is DVAM, or Domestic Violence Awareness Month. It happens every year, and this year it's going to look a bit different because of the pandemic. And so we're, you know, we've been coming here to talk about it, to share information with Somerset County residents. And, you know, we're here again to do that, you know, six feet apart. You know. And we even measure, so, <laughs> so we know we are. We know we're good. And we're in a well-ventilated mm -hmm. area and we're sitting still, so we are mm -hmm. unmasked at this moment. But um, if we were closer, we'd be wearing masks, if, you know. We will talk about the masking too because we want to promote health and safety for everyone and we think it's really important to send that message. But in order for you to hear us clearly, uh, we are unmasked for the moment. So, Just out of curiosity, Michelle, I don't know if you know off the top of your head, but how many years has October has it been since October was, was designated as DV Awareness Month? It's been quite a while. It has been quite a while. Well, the movement started in the 1970s, you know, really picked up steam in the 80s, so I would guess it's about 40 years old. Wow. I should have looked that up. So. Um, know that for next time but um, it's been a while and it's so important because you know domestic violence affects so many people you know one in four women and one in seven men have experienced severe physical violence at the hands of their partner so we know that it's even higher than that for emotional abuse financial abuse you know all those other forms that don't count as severe physical abuse but are still abusive so it happens to a lot of people um, but yet we don't talk about it you know if one in four people had their car broken into you know I feel like you know we'd be doing a lot more to prevent car break-ins um, and it would be talked about and there wouldn't be shame or stigma around it that exists right now around domestic abuse so it's a really important thing to talk about you know that this is happening it happens to people it happens to people in our neighborhoods our friends our family uh, our co-workers you know and it affects us all so that's why we have a month to you know honor survivors, honor those who have lost their lives to domestic, viol to domestic violence. Um, you know, we hope it never comes to that, but we know the reality is it sometimes does. So we're here to say loudly, you know, we're here for you as advocates. Um, your community supports you, and if you are experiencing abuse, you can reach out. If you're a person who is, you know, treating your partner abusively, you can reach out. We have violence intervention groups because everyone deserves to be treated with respect everyone should be able to feel safe in their home um, you know you think of your home as it's where you're, you should be able to relax and you know um, you know just relax and recuperate and if you're you know having to if home is not the safe place that it's supposed to be it makes it really hard for you to you know live your life in a way that you want to and um, if you're constantly having to you know be five steps ahead of your partner to create safety for yourself and your kids you know that's exhausting and yeah. no one should have to do that yeah. so well and as you mentioned Michelle I mean with the pandemic um, obviously our domestic violence awareness month activities are going to look different this year and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we go along but um, you know one area of concern I think that we all have as professionals that work with domestic violence survivors and perpetrators is the effect the pandemic is having on the overall uh, well-being of, of folks even as we were talking uh, before we we started recording in otherwise healthy or somewhat healthy relationships. Yeah, the pandemic is affecting us all. You know, news reports show how, you know, it's people are having increased levels of anxiety and depression and how, you know, it's like cabin fever, fever uh, cabin fever on steroids, someone said, because yeah, if you are um, in, you know, your house with someone 24 seven, if you both are working from home, if one person has been laid off, you know, that definitely increases stress. And so in cases where there's abuse, it also makes it much harder to reach out, much harder to create safety, to get support. You know, maybe you had respite when you went to work or when your partner went to work, but now you're all home 24 seven, maybe trying to homeschool, which is, you know, brings its own set of challenges and stresses. So this is a really hard time for folks. And 
Um, and services have changed too. Like we're all still here as advocates, but we're doing everything over the phone. So know that you can still call the helpline. It's a 24 hour helpline. Um, and you know, we're still available to help you safety plan and with support and uh, even with court advocacy. And we are able to go to the courts now. So that's nice when people need to get a protection from abuse order. Um, we may be able to go to the final hearing with you. So please call our helpline. You know, we can still walk you through the process of getting a PFA over the phone. Uh, we can help you with that. And then when you have to go to court to face that abusive partner, you know, we you may be able to have a court advocate with you because that is a very hard process. And every court is different too. So knowing what the, you know, regulations are at the time, you know, we don't expect anyone to be able to keep up with that. We have a hard enough time but knowing you can call and speak with a court advocate to find out what the process is right now. Um, for a little while, they were able to do it online. I believe people cannot do that anymore because um, they're able to go in person. It's a little safer now, um, but things are always changing. You know, if the numbers go up, the regulations will change. If they go down, they'll change. So um, it's a lot to keep up with. So know that our advocates are there 24 seven to talk to still. Yeah, and folks can access advocacy and other services by calling the the 24 hour hotline. Yeah, exactly. and I think your um, channel 11 will hopefully put it on for us, but our helpline uh, is 1-877-890-7788. People can call, you know, at three in the morning if they need support. Um, friends and family can call. That's something that people don't often know. You know, if you have a loved one or a family member or friend, who is experiencing abuse and you see this and you don't know how to help, you can call the helpline too and talk to us and you know we can support you and supporting them and support you because it's hard. It can feel helpless when mm -hmm. you have someone in your life that's going through this and you don't know how to support them because it is hard and there's a lot of pieces to it. Absolutely. How has it been different for law enforcement, Mike? Um, well, the biggest concern I have is that uh, that isolation that people have, um, and just and I don't have any solid figures to back this up. But just anecdotally, I would say over the past uh, five or six months, uh, I think initially we did see a tremendous decrease in the number of calls for service for domestic violence and sexual assault uh, related incidents, but. I've noticed the last couple of months since things have started to open up and somewhat normalize again, we're, we're back to kind of um, normal numbers, I guess, if, if there is such a thing. Um, I haven't seen the spike in calls like I expected. It mm -hmm. seems like things are, are have kind of leveled out to what they, they normally are for this time of year. Mm -hmm. But I think it's still important to know that you know, there is help out there for people that need services, whether it be from law enforcement or from, from Family Violence Project or, or court or uh, whatever. Those services are still there, although accessing them might be a little bit different than, than we're normally used to, but, but we are still working and, and we are still here for folks that uh, that need those services. Yeah, and shelter is still available for people. Um, we do have a quarantine process in order to try to keep everyone as safe as possible, um, but know that that's still an option. Like, please still call, please still reach out if you need support, um, still yeah. call law enforcement. They are there and they wear masks, you know. I've seen them doing that and we're all here to protect each other, you know. Um, so we can talk about Domestic Violence Awareness Month and the yes. events that are coming up. So October 1st is our Domestic Violence Vigil. Do you want to talk a little bit about that, Mike? Sure. So it's it's going to look a little bit different than it has perhaps in years past. Uh, in in a normal year, uh, if, and, and I guess you could say this might be the new normal, at least moving forward for a while, um, we have had a, a speak out and vigil at Coburg Park in Skowhegan and then we would march down to the Skowhegan town office and have a speak out uh, inside the uh, the council meeting room at at, at the uh, town office. This year because of COVID concerns and to encourage social distancing and uh, you know safety it's going to be an entirely outdoors event. Uh, we are going to meet at Coburn Park on October 1st and it will be at 5 p.m like it uh, generally has been in years past. Um, and we're going to have our vigil and speak out there and, and uh, we will 
be asking that everyone wear a mask and uh, observe proper social distancing uh, requirements because we want this to be safe but we also want hopefully to get people together uh, as much as we can as safely as we can in order to uh, to recognize this very important month mm -hmm. And at that event, um, you know, we have candles that we provide. We have little, you know, electronic ones for now because in the past, you know, sometimes it's windy and <laughs> so regular candles don't work out so well. So we will have little electric candles available for everyone. And um, we usually honor, you know, the people who have passed by stating the names of homicide victims in Maine, um, which is always very solemn. Um, and then, you know, we talk about domestic violence and the resources that are available um, because we want, we want people to know that we're here. Um, and if people have things that they want to share or talk about, you know, we can do that as a group as well because um, this is a time to come together. Um, we're all here for this common cause. And, you know, Family Violence Project as the Domestic Violence Resource Center, you know, law enforcement, we can't do this alone. We all need each other. We need the whole community involved. So it's a time of, you know, to come together as well. So to honor, you know, honor people who have passed, honor survivors, and honor the work that needs to be done. Absolutely. And then, um, do you want to talk about the 5K? Sure. Well, so this year will mark our fourth annual uh, Race to End Domestic Violence 5K. Um, again, in years past, during a, quote, normal year, we would uh, hold the event down at the Goodwill Hinckley campus in Fairfield. Um, this year, it's an entirely virtual event because of because of the pandemic. Um, but folks can still register. Uh, registration is open now. It'll continue to be open throughout the month of October, um, and they're welcome to participate in the race virtually. And that the good thing about it is you can participate from anywhere um, you know I, and I, I like the uh, like the the mention of Smalls Falls I mean mm -hmm. just as one example but basically a, a virtual 5k you can do it anywhere and just post to social media and uh, you know share pictures share your story uh, but it's still a, a, a tremendous fundraiser that we that we do every year for the family violence project um, and you know that's part of our greater uh, Domestic Violence Awareness Month activities, but uh, yeah. very important. And uh, if folks are interested in registering, they can uh, go online either to the Family Violence Project Facebook page or their website. Uh, either way, you can you can register right there. We should also mention that we are doing T-shirts again, uh, like we have in years past. But uh, we also have a virtual store where you can buy other. Uh, race to end domestic violence uh, items like sweatshirts and hats and and that sort of thing, um, but it's it's an important fundraiser for Family Violence Project, but it's also a very important awareness building activity that that we uh, try to put forth every year. Yeah, we'll miss not being in person because that's part of like what makes it special too is seeing all these people come together you know, to support survivors. So we'll miss that, like, visual being together piece. But also a lot of people couldn't come because of the time. Maybe they were working, maybe distance. So now people can do it on their own where they want, when they want. You know, if 9 a.m. wasn't a good time for you, you know, you could do it in the evening or afternoon. And um, you can wear your shirt. Like like Mike said, you know, if you want to take a, a picture or do a video to post on social media, you know, that's part of that awareness piece of letting people know why this is important to you. Uh, because like we've said, you know, we don't talk about this and this is your opportunity too to share why this is so important to you. You know, share it with your friends, share it with your family. Um, we need to talk more about this because it affects so many people. Um, and if you need help with that, if you have questions, you know, you can contact me. That's not a problem. Uh, my information is on the website also. Uh, because this is, you know, we need to talk more about domestic abuse. It affects so many people and we don't talk about it. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big problem. That's why I'm in this position because I want to help people start the conversation. Um, there are a lot of, you know, things that we don't understand. So, and if you want me to come and speak to your group, to your, you know, if you work someplace that you would like a training, you know, please know that I'm here and I can do that.
And I think it's really important, Michelle, that we continue to have these discussions. I think the more open we are about it, um, the more we let folks know that they're not alone. There are people out there that care, that can empathize and, and, and offer help and support. Um, I think that's the way we're going to beat this. I right. think that's the way we're going to rise to that, that challenge and, as a community and, and be able to uh, to beat domestic violence. Right. Well, because it is a community issue, right? We, I think it's easy, especially as Mainers, you know, we're self-reliant. Like, that's one of the qualities that makes us, you know, tough Mainers. But, and we may think, oh, this is happening, you know, in their house. It doesn't concern me. But it does, you know. It, we're all in this together and if someone is suffering if someone is experiencing abuse at the hands of their partner you know the person who's supposed to love and and trust them you know they're supposed to have this you know relationship where they're safe you know being able to to talk to them and say hey you know I'm really worried about you I heard this happening you know do it in a way that doesn't you know you know if you can pull them aside say maybe you know you see them go out to the mailbox maybe you check your mail too and again we're respecting social distancing but you know to be able to say I you know I was really worried the other night you know do you if that happens again do you want me to call 911 have you heard of the family violence project how can I support you you know being able to ask those questions and you know just see what you can do to support them because um, you know they may not know what to do they may not know that we exist they may not think that it's abuse because again it's their partner it's someone that they love and they trust and maybe it doesn't happen that often um you know we know that abuse can happen to anyone regardless of their age their race their gender their um, sexual orientation you know it happens to anyone regardless of religion like all of these things you know domestic violence cuts across all the demographics and you know different things can create different barriers for people and you know when it's happening and people hear it and don't do anything what message does that give that person to you know you heard this but yet it's their problem you know that sends a really loud message to that survivor as well mm -hmm. Um, so, and I know it can feel scary to, you know, approach them sometimes, especially if it's someone you don't know. And, um, but I, I encourage you to call us and get support if you want help and, you know, how to have that conversation because we're here for that. You know, we're, we're totally here for that. We know this is a hard thing to talk about, but the more we talk about it, the easier it'll get. And, you know, maybe you can be there for someone who doesn't know where to go. Sure. And I think it's important to, to note again, too, that Family Violence Project services are 100% confidential. Mm -hmm. They don't share their informa a person's information with anyone, including law enforcement, mm -hmm. without that person's consent. And I think that's so important. Uh, working with survivors in the past, you know, sometimes they'll say, well, I'm so, I was so embarrassed to, to reach out and, and admit maybe there was something going on that I needed help with. But, but knowing that their information will be kept confidential and not shared with anyone uh, outside of the organization without their absolute consent, I think is, is very important for folks to recognize as well. Yeah, thank you, Mike. Yeah, because it, it feels like it's opening a big can of worms, mm -hmm. right, to, to say that this is happening. And so know that we don't tell you what to do. We're there to support your decisions. You know, we may ask questions of like, you know, what do you want to do next? What do you try, like, how can I support you? What do you need to be safe? Um, but you're in the driver's seat. And so maybe today it was just you told someone, you know, mm -hmm. and that's okay because we know it's a much, you know, things don't just change overnight. I feel like that's what happens on TV when there's mm -hmm. abuse. They're like, just tell me this is happening. And then they tell them and, you know, then they live happily ever after. But we know that is not necessarily the case like that is just opening the door to all of these other steps to take for safety and you know unfortunately in our society is on that survivor you know I would like to think we you know hold the person who's using abuse more accountable but you know we know that's not always the reality you know that person and Mike said perpetrator earlier I don't like to use the word perpetrator I know that's like a very um, criminal cop justice lingo. turn <laughs> yeah co cop lingo or judicial system but like you know perpetrator sounds like this 
bad guy, the swamp monster crawling out of a sewer, when we know people who use abuse are normal, everyday people in our society. True. And they might be using that against you, too. Like, oh, everyone knows what a stand-up person I am. You know, go ahead and call the police. No one's going to believe you. Go ahead and tell your friends. They aren't going to believe you. They see how I am. They love me. Um, so that's a really hard part, too, about um, the way, you know, our society you know, we need to change again how we, you know, work with people who are using violence in their relationships uh, in a different way. Because, I, I mean, we think of the criminal justice um, as a big part of that, but, you know, that doesn't always go how you expect either. You know, people True. could bail out that night. So, you know, survivors often know whether it's safe or not for them to call the police, what it's going to look like. Um, they may have fears around that. And so just know that everyone's choices are going to be different. And that's okay. Like, people need to be able to make their choices, and we support them in making the choices for safety for them. We have a whole other event that we haven't <laughs> talked about. I don't know how we're doing on time. Um, but October 22nd, which is a Thursday, we also have Poetry Express uh, with Sama abdur -Akib. She's a poet from Maine, and this is a collaboration we've done with the Maine Humanities Council uh, and the Maine State Library. And it's a very new event for me personally for the Family Violence Project, but I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it is going to be virtual because of, you know, of course, uh, the pandemic. So it'll be done online, which I think will actually work pretty well because, again, it can lots of people will be able to access it. It'll be at 6 p.m. and we'll have members of the community who are performers of poets uh, of poetry done by Maine um, writers. So we've selected poems based on the themes of abuse, survival, healing, and resilience and asked Maine, you know, community members in this area to be performers for that. Um, so you can find out more information on our Facebook page um, as well as our website. And so we'll all be in a Zoom format performing poems, like reading a poem, saying a little bit about why we chose that poem and then reading it again. And the way it's been done in the past with this event is, you know, a few people will read and then there's community, you know, conversation because there's usually a crowd. It'll be a little different mm -hmm. uh, because it will be over Facebook Live, I believe. So maybe people can type in comments. Um, I believe, you know, the people who are performing will be able to have a conversation and we can respond to the comments that are put in. Um, again, it's going to be a little mm -hmm. different, but... So, um, but folks, if they just want to tune in and, ob yeah. and observe they can ju they can do that they can tune into facebook live on okay. it it'll be on our page on main state library's page main humanities humanities council's page yeah. on facebook yeah it'll be very interesting so um go ahead and it, it, we've talked a lot about facebook that is a way that people receive information these days so please find us on there um we have a lot going on there as well as twitter and instagram because um, that's where people are. So we try to yeah. arrive there and give out information um, there as well because we want people to know we're there for them. Yeah. Great. Busy month coming up. Yes, very busy month. It's It usually is. October is... It's a very interesting time, and we always have volunteer trainings going on, so if that's something you're interested in, you know, people can, um, you know, uh, find us on Facebook or find our website and write in that way. Um, we have those ongoing as well. Um, we will have one of those starting up too, uh, but if you're interested, we'll probably have one again in January, and it'll probably be over Zoom again. Mm -hmm. So it's, I mean, this technology, it's very strange to do it. It's nice to be in person, but... It's very. It's been made more accessible for folks, and that's a nice piece too. Yeah, it, it is nice that we can stay connected. However, uh, you, you know, however that uh, that might be, whether it be in person or virtually. Yeah, yeah. Thank goodness for technology. I can't imagine doing all this pandemic stuff without <laughs> being connected somehow. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Channel 11, for having us. Um, thank you, Mike, for coming oh, and talking about the here. task force and your, the whole role, because, again, it takes a community to end domestic violence. And we appreciate you all for watching. And if you need anything, our helpline is available 24-7 at 1-877-890-7788. And we hope you have a wonderful October. Thank you.